uh, I want to look over a few videos at some of the paradigms that have shifted and some of the antiquated thinking that is stu still ruling our lives on the planet. Okay, uh, Shortly before I came onto the planet, one of the paradigms that shifted was that the Earth was flat. Okay, and Chris Columbus sailed around the world, boom, all of a sudden. And so many of our belief systems were shattered right then and there. Okay, before then, heaven was up, hell was down, because they were both infinite spaces. They went on for ever and ever and ever. Right? Then all of a sudden, we've got this circular globe that we're on, and it doesn't make any sense I, to a lot of people, to me. I wondered as, as a kid, well, oh, it's hell is down. Where do they go to the molten core of the earth and spend time there? I don't know. I do want you to look at some of the things that are broken apart. When I was a kid, it said, what goes up must come down. That was a law. Right? Then in my lifetime, somebody set this rocket off, and it went off into space. And it's like, where'd that go? I don't know. It didn't come down. It wasn't supposed to come down. Yeah, it was supposed to come down. But it didn't come down. Okay? Then they said, to a action, there is always an equal and opposite reaction. Right? And then, it, just before my lifetime, somebody disproved that when they decided to test out the nuclear age and see if they could uh, decimate a huge part of the human society, we Americans taking full responsibility for wiping out 100,000 or so innocent people by experimenting with nuclear energy. And that an opposite, that a, that a force did not cause an equal and opposite reaction. It was like this holy shit difference. Okay, so a lot of things have broken down in my lifetime. I've heard that when the first sewing machines were used commercially, Man came in and destroyed them. Men came in because it was not supposed to be that way. According to that, of course. Bolton's Folly, the steam engine, a whole bunch of things have been... So, in my lifetime, a whole bunch of things have changed. What set off these series of rants is I was talking about a parasite cleanse, and I got a request for the double-blind studies. They've never made sense to me. I'm going to talk about them and see if you can look and see, as I have, how they don't make any sense at all. Well, there's a book by Donald Epstein, uh, Dr. Epstein, uh, called Healing Myths, Healing Magic, I think. And he talks about people who have been involved in placebo studies. And if somebody gets heals themselves from a placebo, okay, you're in the study, they give you these two drugs that are supposed to heal you, and you get better from taking placebo, people will go, and they find out, people go, <laughs> what an idiot. How could you get better from a sugar pill? <laughs> right? There's a story that I've heard, whether it's true or not, about a man who got went out of his way. He, he took placebos, he got better, and then somebody pointed out to him that it was a placebo, and he got sick again. Okay, Again, not taking in probably the most relevant thing in your healing is you. Okay, Again, what set this off was... I did a couple of videos on the parasites and the possible links that people have made between other diseases, and somebody came with a 20th century comment that absolutely blew my mind for days because I've been trying to sort through this. What about the double-blind study? Show me the double-blind study. And I've heard this for years, and the first one of my first thoughts was, okay, let's do a double-blind study, okay, where neither party knows what they're doing, on a heart transplant. <laughs> Who wants to volunteer? Uh, not me. Let's do a double-blind study on a chiropractic adjustment. Who doesn't want their chiropractor to know what they're doing and who's going to volunteer for that stuff? We're going to have to get the prisoners out from the Nazi experience for that stuff. Okay, so the double-blind studies are set up by somebody to achieve a certain result. And they're supposed to be, hmm, right? But what in the quantum world, okay, since... Einstein started talking about quantum since Lynn McTaggart has looked out into the field and said, this doesn't make any sense anymore. This is what's going on out there. Your, your double-blind study doesn't make any sense. There are too many parameters that even to the point that what they say now in quantum physics is the experimenter cannot be extracted from the experiment. If the experimenter is expecting certain results, there is a really good chance that they will influence the experiment, right? And they can. Just as surely as a person can get better from a placebo, the experimenter can, it, can in, 
impact the experiment they're doing and come out with a result. And another experimenter will do the same experiment and come out with a different result. The double-blind study doesn't make any sense, and it was set up for people who are trying to take away our history. There are theories that somebody said, okay, okay, you take, we've got this new drug, right, and we think it's going to do this, so we're going to take, you're not going to know what the drug does, and you're not going to know what the drug is, but, but we're going to give you this, and we're going to give you a sugar pill, and then we're going to watch what happens, and there's results, of course. You give people drugs, there are results. And sometimes the results aren't even close to what they think they should be because people's belief systems come in, their capacity as a human being uh, come in, and some people get better, oops, from the sugar pills, some people get better from the drugs. Again, what set this rant off was I was talking about herbs and parasite cleanses and the possibility of a connection between parasites and disease in the body. And somebody said, what about the double-blind study? I'll believe in that. Okay, keep believing in your double-blind study. What I prefer to believe in, okay, is what's trying to be taken out of our culture is trial and error. If for thousands of years an herb has been taken by people and it has a specific result, or for hundreds of years if a homeopathic has been taken by a person and it causes specific results, that's what I'm going to look at. I'm not going to blindfold anybody, I'm not going to give them placebos, I'm not going to give them bullshit and ask them to make the difference. I'm going to give them something that has proven to be effective for a very long period of time. Chiropractic makes people feel better. It has been here hundreds of years. If you want to look more closely at some of the healing myths and healing magic, there's a book by Donald Epstein, and I think it's titled Just That. One of the things he points out is there have been people who have been involved in these double-blind studies, and they've gotten better, right, from the sugar pills. Right? Now, there's been cases where if this person was told that they were taking the sugar pill, they got worse. Right? And it, it, this, is the, this is the whole point of this. There is no telling what we're capable of until we find out what we're capable of. Okay? The double-blind studies can't be utilized in so many cases, but the thousands of years of people taking herbs that have worked, that the powers that be are now saying, you have to prove these work. Uh, they've been proven, not by your mythical standards, by time, trial, and error, by that which has evolved us. Okay, I'm continuing on the double-blind study thing, okay? Uh, and how it is antiquated. I don't think it's antiquated. I think it was obsolete the day it was innovated. It was a theory by somebody that said, okay, let's do it this way and we'll see what, what happens. And again, there's no predicting the human system. My first major in college was phys ed. And we were looking at this computer and it was, and this guy said, you know, if we put in the lengths and we uh, put in the size of the athlete, we'll be able to predict a, a, a tremendous amount. And I said, okay, will we be able to predict gold medal winners? And he said, oh, I don't think so. He said, there's a component com that comes in when a person is in competition that cannot be factored into a computer, no matter how hard you work. And it comes out in their performance, but you can take the same length, same everything of a person, and the gold medal winner will be different. And he said, I don't think we'll ever know that. And that's us. We are unknown. We are infinite. We are capable of so many things. Right? And then a few years ago, somebody, I think a drug pusher, said, let's prove this. Let's do it with a double-blind study. I'm not going to know what you're, I'm doing, and you're not going to know what you're doing. Again, I'm going to take it back out to the chiropractic adjustment or open-heart surgery. Who doesn't want their surgeon to know what they want? So it's, it's first of all, a very limited area of expertise, this, I mean, of capabilities, this double-blind study. There are certain places where you just absolutely cannot use it, uh, or the, uh, the outcome is going to be real, real obvious. But, the, the, again, the thing that I am going to follow through with, the thing that I'm going to believe, is what has happened for the last hundreds or thousands of years. 
But I'm going to pay attention to what I see, and if it works, I'm going to continue to do it. I, I, don't, I, I know that there's evidence that if people have back surgery, they have a back, second back surgery because they're in so much pain that they have to have a second back surgery. I have taken people who have, were supposed to have back surgery, and they no longer have significant back pain. They do maintenance. We do work on them. They do keep working to keep their back strong, but they haven't had surgery because a lot of people who know this know that they have to have a second surgery. We have stepped out into a quantum world to where the experimenter cannot be extracted from the experiment. Okay, that means that if the experimenter has a certain belief system, it's going to follow that the results of the experiment are that. The double-blind study is antiquated. It doesn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense when it was instituted to try to prove things are a certain way. Look into history. Look at the herbs that works. Look at the homeopathics that have worked. Do what you want. I am not going to follow the parameters of the double-blind study because I don't find them valid. I find them a theory that is actually full of a lot of cock and bull shit. Thank you very much. www.micpeakperformance.com <laughs> wow, I cannot believe, okay, we're talking about paradigms, paradigm shifting, and, and some of the things that don't make any sense anymore within uh, the context of the new millennium. Uh, and I can't believe how much energy this one comment to my YouTube gave me. Uh, and the comment was, well, what about the double-blind studies? Again, I'm making fun of it, I am. Because the double-blind study is like so many other things that we're asked to believe in that don't make any sense. Now, there are some laws, some immutable laws on the planet. There's a window right over there. Okay, I'm on the fourth floor of a condominium complex overlooking the beach in Barcelona. If I go and step out of that window, uh, which direction do you think I'm going to go? I'm pretty certain which one I'm going to go and, and, and uh, what my terminal velocity will be and what the ultimate end will be, so I'm not even curious about stepping out of that window because that's a law. And it's, it's mutable, apparently, because there are some people, they say, who can transcend that law. And whether that's true or not, I haven't met anybody, but I'm looking forward to it, to where they can levitate and things like that. I want to I see that within my lifetime. I've heard that it's possible. But those laws, I don't argue with. Uh, some of the other laws, some of the things that they say, oh, um, I, I said this before, I was in a seminar uh, anti-aging conference in London, very, very good thing, and, and the innovator of it came up and we were talking and, and he said, what is this? And I was talking about uh, salt techno technology, self-actualization learning technology, and uh, I said it started, my start was in kinesiology. He said, I never had time for that muscle pulling stuff. And I said, you know, me neither, really, but over the years I've been pulling on muscles and people keep getting better, and so I just keep doing it. I keep adjusting people and people get better, and so I keep doing it. Uh, to try to do a double-blind study, again, on that, on kinesiology, on chiropractic, you, you can't fall within the parameters of the double, as, as far as I know, as far as I can see, nor would I want a kinesiologist who didn't know what he was doing, working on me, if I, you know what I'm saying? There's just too many variables. If you take the human factor out of anything, which you can't do it, it's impossible. We are too interactive. We're too... I've seen people come in to classes and make all these claims. They've gotten rid of tumors, they've gotten healthy, and I've seen some of my very good friends do everything they could to stay alive, and they died of cancers and other things, accidents. He said, I can't figure life out, but there are certain aspects of life that don't make any sense. Again, the double-blind study to me has is nonsensical. It was a set of standards. Somebody said, here's the ultimate empirical. And then if you stop and examine it, it's as silly as the world being flat. Okay? That's, I think, the last of these rants. I want to thank whoever sent that in, whoever asked me about the double-blind study, because it gave me a chance to look at all, so many of the paradigms that have shifted in my life and see if I can get my handle on them and figure life out. And I haven't. <laughs> I don't think I ever will. Uh, I'm going to lecture at the Barcelona Chiropractic College uh, tomorrow, and I've got to tell the students the truth. If you think you know what's going on, you're wrong. If you're willing to be surprised by life and know that every patient is different, and every patient has an, a, an, a unique configuration that if you can sort through it, 
You may be able to co-create a healing experience with them. Good luck.